Hi, I'm Meg. And I'm David. Welcome to The Average Vegans, a podcast to help you live an attainable vegan lifestyle. We're not the ripped influencer vegans you hear about in other podcasts. We're just some ordinary people living in the South, eating plants and loving animals. We today are interviewing Peggy Brousseau, and originally from Minneapolis, she's a London-based food writer, cook, and committed vegan. I love that, committed vegan. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, She has written or co-written 24 books on cooking and nutrition. It's amazing, including her new book, what we're talking about today, The Contented Vegan, Recipes and Philosophy from a Family Kitchen. It's not going to be released till March 1st of this year, but we already have a copy and we are going to give it away as a a little treat to our viewers and our listeners. So that's what we're talking about today. And I'm pretty excited because this book is beautiful and probably the thickest cookbook I own. So pretty impressed. It's it's amazing. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. That's a very nice introduction, Meg. It's nice to be here. We're really happy to have you here. I'm very pleased you like the the look of it and hopefully the contents as well. Oh, um, of course. It, oh, it's, it's the beautiful. product of um you know many years of motherhood and family life and so all of the recipes in it for instance have been tested by my husband and my two sons and lots of friends and people dropping by as well. So I think it's, that's a, that's I think it's a true test, right? If you can, if you can make everyone else fall in love and happy with your, with your cooking, that's it. Cause I, you know, I know for me, when I cook, it's like, you know, if I make it, I'm going to eat it. But if you make others happy and enjoy it and really compliment it, you know, you're really, you're really hitting it, striking a chord. Yeah. I, I, I've used it. I must say, well, I've used cooking as a, a creative outlet over the years as well. Um, and, and that's really helped because especially fresh foods, vegetables and fruits is so colorful and so much visual texture to them. And I, I noticed, Meg, that you're a painter. Um, and I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you paint, but I, I've, I feel that there's just so much about the plant world that is of interest in, then, in that way, in the visual way alone. And then once you start exploring flavors and aromas, um, I, I see no reason to include anything else. Well, it's it. almost like you're painting with your food. Yes. It, I it's really agree. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's why I try to follow the idea of like of, of eat the rainbow whenever I'm cooking anything and putting it together, like ensure I have like such a variety of colors. It really helps kind of make things pop. Well, that's also ensuring that your your nutrition is covered. I'm sure you're quite aware of all the, the elements involved in that, but that that idea of just eating the colors really covers a lot of um, nutritional needs. N- n- nutritional requirements yeah, hits, hits, without hits, really hits, having to think about it too much <laughs> oh absolutely yeah, it hits, hits all those those my those macros and micros that uh yeah you make sure hitting especially you know it's i like to say especially if you're on a vegan diet but mostly you know if even if you're not a, on a on a on a on a uh, plant-based diet uh you need to hit the same thing you're not, you're not going to get a lot of those you need those micro many of the micronutrients from animal products anyway so you need to make sure you eat the rainbow if you're not on a plant-based diet to uh that's to right. those micros well, the, as well, there in plants, there's what they call phytochemicals. Again, I'm sure you, you've both heard of these, but the, the substances, and there are at least 10,000 of them. Not all of those are named yet, but they are substances that work with what we call nutrients to sort of um, modify their effect, sometimes enhance it, sometimes reduce it, to work with the body. And they're in fresh plant foods in abundance and so the colors in part represent those phytochemicals and as well as you know as well as painting the picture <laughs> absolutely um, so yeah. i i love i love i love the knowledge because you know you, you you have the cookbook which is amazing recipes in it but you have the knowledge of like the like the micronutrients the macros and like the phytonutrients were all that all that are coming from and that's just that that's 35 years of you know veganism experience like shining through well yes i mean i i tried to say in the introduction little letter that i i put in it that when when our family first started with a vegan diet uh it was it was 
considered a death threat <laughs> to our to our family. Um, people say you'll never you'll never do it. You can't do it. It's not this. It's not that. And so it was a case of learning, and I've thoroughly enjoyed that process. And of course, as years have passed, it's unfolded, and more and more people are accepting it. Hey, this is actually beneficial. It's not just you know, kind of edge of the plate, will you survive or won't you? It's actually beneficial to one's health and the, the nutritional profile of one's diet. When I went vegan, my mom, you know, it, uh, it's like it's like you had to like kind of like come out, come, I would say come out of the pantry to people yeah. like, well, I'm <laughs> vegan now. And my mom, my mom's attitude is, well, as long as you're getting, as long as you're healthy, you're getting what you need, that's fine. Just, you know, you know, be safe and whatever. So uh, that's... Well, that that's very positive. Yeah, I was surprised actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gr growing up in the good. South, in Georgia, in the South, where like you know, food, especially animal-based foods, is in everything, and that's such a big part of you know every holiday and every gathering. I was like, here we go. She's like, as long as you're healthy, you know. So you're an adult, yeah. like, hey. you know. And well, I must say, you look very healthy. Thank and, you. And you, I try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for for being vegan for that number of years, um, you know, it's. It, we're all adverts in a sense for does it work or doesn't it and the further we we get into it i i believe i've experienced this the more interested we become in the health aspect because we're feeling the benefits of it right what what speaking of what 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 drove you to uh, what kind of moved you into adopting a uh, plant-based vegan lifestyle well i took the long way around i must tell you that um, <laughs> because i grew up in the midwest and like you've just described um, meat was pretty important to everyone, and, and dairy as well. And it was included in most meals. Um, and I didn't, I read a book about Louisa May Alcott as a girl, and I, I think the word vegetarian was in that, but I didn't hear the word for, <laughs> for a, a number of years after that. And basically, I just became, I didn't like the texture of meat and I didn't enjoy the sort of phlegmy feeling in my mouth of cheese and and dairy so I d gradually backed away from it but it was um, an experience here in Britain where I ran a small holding for a number of years and I didn't like what I saw of how people treated livestock and I decided I didn't want to be part of that and didn't want that included on the in the small holding and became vegetarian without really knowing what to call myself. And from that moment, I started to explore the plant world in 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 ardent, you know, in, in earnest. And that really, I just fell in love with. Like I grew, had a herb garden and an orchard, and it just seemed enough. So gradually, gradually, um, I became very firmly vegetarian, and then. A few years later, my husband, um, who was vegetarian when I met him, that was very unusual. Uh, my husband and I just decided that's enough. We'll just we'll just drop that because the flavor and uh, uh, the scent of dairy, especially, was very uh, overpowering, and became distasteful. And so we just started to cut it out from our diet, and it didn't take very long, maybe a month, before we were eating a totally plant-based diet. And then we started to learn about it. That's really how the order we put it in. And our children were born a few years later, so by then we'd become uh, quite informed. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it was it was partly animal based, partly that you know my reason for for moving to a vegan diet was partly because of the care I saw animals receiving or the non care. Um, but then the emphasis shift to health because we were raising a family. And recently, of course, um, the, the, I would say one of the main reasons <clears throat> that I like to promote veganism or the plant-based diet is the environment, the clear impact that, that diet has on the environment, whether, whatever you choose. You have, it's, important part to, uh, it's important to realize that whatever you choose to eat does affect your environment. And so now the... For me, the emphasis is on well opening up and unfolding that bit of information, <laughs> and seeing exactly how the the plant-based diet can 
improve or mitigate the crises we're facing environmentally. Yeah, there's there's so many levels of you know when people ask why do you go vegan? It's usually like you know for the animals, for the health, or for the environment. And I think eventually, usually for most people, kind of becomes a combo of all three. It does. Yeah, it starts. To, it just opens you up to all sorts of different ways of thinking, a different approach to food, um, a different way of assessing what's put in front of you or what's on offer at the markets and so forth. Well, yeah, it's very, it's very much, you know, what you take in is what you also what you put out, whether it's, you know, taking in affects yourself, also affects your environment, your friends, yeah. your family, and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't think I've ever heard of someone going vegetarian or uh, vegetarian or vegan without some kind of, like, influence or knowledge from someplace being, like, brought into their, their realm. I just find it fascinating that it was just something that naturally happened and that your body was almost made to to eat this way because you you didn't like meat you didn't you know dairy yeah. was was strong to you like i find that just absolutely fascinating that your body was just like nah i don't really need this stuff and it yeah. wasn't just some influence from somebody else that's really interesting well meg it took a long time and um at in the at the start there there were I, at least i didn't perceive any influence i didn't know anyone who was um following that way of eating. I didn't know who to ask or where to find out. Um, maybe I was slow. <laughs> uh, but I think you're right. There are people who uh, who just naturally have an affinity with eating the plant-based diet. It's an easier switch, perhaps. Um, and I think that for me, the, the, greater, the greater difficulty was to deal with the social pressure, uh, especially when people learned I was pregnant and then when I was breastfeeding and raising the children and so forth, um, to, to deal with the social assumptions about what you had to have in order to survive. And some of them from people who should know better, like doctors. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's it, 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 that's probably the biggest thing. Like, uh, even I can a few vegan groups, and people ask, like, I'm looking for a doctor. Do you might know no one that's that that that, uh, that supports or is okay with a vegan lifestyle? It's kind of wild. We actually have to like look for that. That's yes. Really concern. Yeah, there have been a few. Um, they call them GPs over here, general practitioners, who've um actually been brought in front of the, the their governing body to say, why aren't you promoting more drug use uh, and they say well, well well i'm doing it with diet and that was a number of years ago i must say it's you know the things have really changed uh, recently and thankfully um, because people do realize that diet has a huge impact on how how we live and it's, how we feel it's still mostly the same over here where it's mostly like you know you know a, 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 a drug a drug is the solution as opposed to uh yeah. opposed to food was it uh the, I think it was uh, uh, the saying, let, let, let food be thy medicine, let medicine be thy food. That's it, Hippocrates. Hippocrates, yes. I wasn't saying, yes. I, I always mispronounce that name, so I was trying to avoid saying yeah. it. I'm glad you said it properly. Because like, yeah. Hippocrates? Hippocrates? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's, and I and that's, you know, like people, you know, like, why aren't you taking, like, I have if I have like a headache, you know, usually my first thing is like, okay, have I eaten enough today? What have I eaten today? Have enough water? Is it sleep before I start, you know, throwing pills down my throat? Not that you know, medication and you know, and, and has doesn't have its place. It absolutely does. But I always try to think, what have I done or not done to myself to put myself in that position? That's great. I love that attitude. I have that as well. And I think, you know, uh, in in my book, there's a, a section actually called "Let Food Be Your Medicine," because uh, it can be, and because of the the phytochemicals that we talked about earlier. Um, those substances that really kind of enhance the effect of the nutrients in your food. And there's so much we can do if we just, as you've indicated, David, where if we just uh, put that filter in front of ourselves first, saying, well, what, what can I do? And what can I eat or not eat um, that will improve that problem I'm experiencing? You, you mentioned you have in that book, your book, it's, it's there's so much information in it, and I mean that in an absolutely positive way. It's 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 almost like a book inside of a book in and of itself. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's it's like because you know Meg has a physical copy of it. She's been looking through, and I've been looking through the PDF version of it. And uh, it's I've been going through. I'm like, okay, I need to like set you know some time aside and like 
like turn on a light and like really focus because there's a lot of information. What 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 makes your book you know unique compared to like the uh, like other the cookbooks that are out there? Well, it's the it's the extra information like like you just said. It's specifically that information that deals with um, how with philosophy, how to think and feel about your food, what you put in your mouth, um, how to hook that into all aspects of life if possible, which is why I've covered the environment and why I've covered family life and pressure from outside. Um, and really to, to try and invite people to consider their food as something they have a relationship with. And I don't mean to sound weird there, but that um, it, it's important that you're dealing with another life form. And if you accept that, uh, that it's a plant, plant life, then and you accept responsibility for using that life to help yourself and to you know raise your children if you have them, look after your pets, um, all the things that we do, then it it shifts into a philosophical and a sort of mental emotional opening of the person. You you mentioned this in one way earlier, David, that um, they start to all hook together. So my book is unusual for that, that it, it tries to not just deliver the tasty recipes, which I hope are also easy and inexpensive by and large, but also to, to kind of deliver the whole package or at least an invitation to experience the whole package of, um, let's say, ethics, uh, let's say an attention to the environment, an attention to others, does that help? <laughs> oh, absolutely, yes. That's, and that's it's, it's, it's uh, there's two things there. They're interesting. You, you mentioned the first is you know Meg and I were actually talking about the recipes and how they, they're 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 simple, but in a, a unique kind of way. Where and when I'm looking through it because I I meal prep every week and yeah. a lot of cookbooks. Uh, it's like okay, I I want to meal prep and I want to look through this cookbook trying to find something. It's like okay, this like me four and a half days to make, and I need ingredients that I do not have. Yeah, and I have. There's no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make this bananas thing. I'll make it for like a special meal for like a Christmas thing. But I'm not gonna make it for meal prep. And a lot of things in there, I can. I can make even just scrolling through. I came across a uh, like a. It was like a. I think it was a white bean spread. It was like that looks amazing. That'd be great yeah. on a sandwich. It looks really good. And uh, there's that. And also you mentioned the philosophy of it and it, the way you know you kind of speak about it. Uh, veganism in your book it's almost like it has a like almost like a philosophy you have a you have you ingrain a philosophy and almost a, a spirituality to it almost to for lack of a better word well, that's very thank you that that's that means it's worked because um i put a lot of that into it or at least i tried to um because i've lived it um i've uh, you know, I grew into it. It took me many, many years to become vegan. Or, and then I have lived it for three and a half decades. And uh, that's what I have to impart. And as w as for the recipes, um, we're a family. So we haven't got all the time in the world just to spend cooking. We haven't got an endless supply of exotic ingredients, even though we live in London. Which <laughs> but... Um, so it's, it's very down to earth and, but I've had fun with it because I've been creative with the ingredients and creative with what's in season, which is another important thing. For yeah. Us. And I, I love that. You have a whole section about, uh, uh, eating in season. You also list like seasonal vegetables and fruits and vegetables and like when to get them and when they're, they're at their best. Uh, and I love that I have, there's not a farmer's market that close to me. Unfortunately, there, I used to go to one every weekend back where I used to live. Um, but yeah, f I, fresh from farmer's markets and, and seasonal and local, there's, there's yeah. nothing like it. Exactly. We're very fortunate because, uh, London has a number of farmer's markets. Um, and people used to call them expensive, but I've done the costing and I know that we, we pay about half of what we used to pay for when we purchase things from a supermarket. So plus we get to know the growers. And as you say, the food is extremely fresh and most of it is organic. So th th that combination means that the nutrient quality and the flavor qualities are as best we can get living in central London. 
And that is very, very important. Oh, absolutely. You're cutting out that middleman, which means you're also cutting out all of the uh, all of the carbon emissions that are coming through travel and taking them to and from, going across you know thousands of miles across ships that they're coming That's overseas. It. Yeah. Um, you know, and I one thing I love about farmers markets is you know you can talk directly to the farmer, so you, your money's going right to the person who's growing it. Exactly. So again, you're exactly. cutting that middleman. Yeah. So you actually, in many ways, you're you're supporting a, a a local business or you know small business in that sense. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, they I can, use. So I go ahead, honey. I'll yeah. say also they can they can tell you how to if something is unique and you have it before they can even tell you how to cook and how to actually use it. Yes, yeah, that's right. Well, I on this when I ran the small holding, I was a grower, and I did deliver things to to markets. So I understand the importance of um, having that direct link with people and every little bit of extra that they earn from that direct contact. I'm all in favor of it. Absolutely. There's a, a I mean, we do, be, living in central London, we do have the opportunity to explore many, many other cuisines. I call them world cuisines, but you could call them ethnic cuisines as well. Like there, um, there are spice shops and that sell the beans and spices um, from the Indian subcontinent. And that's very exciting. Similarly, there's Middle Eastern cultures who have shops that kind of dedicated to, to their cuisine and this is terribly exciting so what what our pattern has been and what i advocate in the book for anyone really is to to just explore uh and and keep your your keep the excitement about what you prepare for your meals by introducing things when you can a new spice here or a herb um try a, a vegetable you, or fruit you've never even seen before sometimes. Um, but then to build this kind of basic uh, diet, basic basic way of eating that is con you know consistent, it's uh, you're familiar with it, it's health giving, and then you can just play around with a little bit on the fringes. And it, it's terribly interesting and exciting for us. What what it, well and, and that's you're talking about how like having uh, playing with the fringes and having you know that the uh, you know, these these shops. What are what are some staples when especially looking at your recipes that you would suggest people keeping on hand? Well, the first one is beans. Um, that we buy beans in uh, two two kil two kilogram. Let's see, that's about four and a half pounds in sacks of four and a half pounds, and and for those we go to um, the Middle Eastern or Mediterranean shops or to the Indian subcontinent shops and I mean there must be 30 or 40 different types we can buy in the dried form and each if I if I pour out a cup or a cup and a half of dried beans that's a meal for four people probably with second servings as well <laughs> it's and it's we're talking about pennies it's just very very um, inexpensive very sustaining packed with not just protein, but uh, many of the um, the key nutrients like folate and um, B, B vitamins and zinc and so forth, magnesium. Um, and so that's one of the first things I'd say is get some big jars and store up some beans. And then the, 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 the next most important food, well, I would almost put it first really, but is greens. And of course, they don't keep so well. So that's what we predominantly buy at the farmer's market each week. And you talk about a weekly food prep, David, but I, I have mine coming up tomorrow because we roll in from the market with just bags full of greens and I give them a, a wash and refresh them, give them a drink of water, and I have a way of storing them in our refrigerator so that they stay fresh right through the week and you know until I want to use them for salads or cooking various things so. yeah wow that's, a <laughs> <laughs> that's and that it's it, and again i i i i keep things on hand too like pastas and beans and things like that and uh usually like those the ones that go bad quickly is when i like you i i get out i get uh i i at the market for me it's the store down grocery store down the road but yep. uh i really wish yep. the farmer's market much closer but unfortunately there, there isn't i need to i need to reach out and maybe find one i can visit maybe on a saturday when I have the free time, which is rare. Yeah. Uh, your cookbook has so many different, it's, 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 it kind of 
has a, it hits the spectrum of different type of cuisines and uh, 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 from different areas, different spices. If what um, what 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 cuisine would you suggest that kind of vegans nail down, nail down first? Ooh. That's a tough one. I guess I'm looking at the Mediterranean cuisine, which is you know the hummus, salads, olives, olive oil, um, very light on the bready sort of thing. So, like pita bread is unleavened often, so it's a little bit easier on the waistline and also easier to digest. Now. This is impossible, though, because now you've got me going. Um, <laughs> because then the, the, the Chinese diet as well is fascinating for its lightness, or potentially for its lightness. And you have there the, the option between the noodle sort of diet and the rice diet. The rice diet, I believe, is in northern China, and the noodle in southern China, and into probably Thailand and Vietnam and so forth. Uh, Oh, this is impossible. Um, I've never been asked that question, and I find I'm finding it very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, but a little, little, little challenge for you. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can see that um, that that we've explored all, all the the spices and the different options that we that we come across, and that's really what I would encourage others to do wherever you are. I um, mind, you know, that there's. There will be ways of cooking, and there will be foods that are particular to your area, wherever you are, and that's very interesting. Make use of it. Yeah, I, I, I would suggest people you know, pick, finding a finding a you know relatively inexpensive spice you never had before, and you know getting yeah. it on a whim, and then doing your research after the fact. Because if you do research beforehand, it can seem overwhelming. Uh, yes. But getting a spice, you know, even if it's like you've, you've never cooked with curry before, getting a curry powder. Get, you know, or, or sort of, you know, a, a curry spice, taking it home with you and then sitting down and go, okay, now what can I make with this? And, and once you already have it, it really inspires you to kind of dive in and it's not That's overwhelming. That's really brilliant. That's it. brilliant. I agree with that. That's so interesting because then you can just respond when you see that. You should say, well, that's a pretty color or, and you, that's, that's kind of joyous. And I think that is a very w good approach. So, you um, almost talk yourself out of it if you research it beforehand, right? Like you could get so intimidated, you won't even purchase it. So I love that tip too. I think that's great for yes. for people that are taking that venture into going vegan. Um, I think our, our final question um, would be, you know, people are trying to venture into going vegan during January, especially families. And your book does focus a lot on families. So what would you suggest for like a family as they're transitioning in lifestyle? Oh, well, patience, first of all, um, and that everyone get involved. I, I don't know if you've picked up in, in the message, if you like, but I do think children, however old or young, should be and probably will want to be involved in preparing and selecting family meals. Um, and if if they aren't, if they don't, if they aren't offered that opportunity, or if they refuse it, then they are at the mercy of whatever is fed to them in later years. And I think the earlier one can involve one's children, the better. Um, but for the family, I think if if, it, if the whole family is transitioning, to pick a meal, as in is it breakfast, lunch, or dinner, that um, to make the first level of transition, let's say, so that if your breakfast has been cereal of some sort with dairy milk, just change it from dairy milk to a plant milk. Um, if it's going to be lunch change your hamburger to a bean burger. Something very simple um, that you can say, that was easy and that was flavorsome. I, I don't know if you've come across early in the book, there's a little piece called the 80-20 rule. And this has been a godsend for many families who've worked, who I've worked with, where um, you, you just analyze in a very gentle way. You, you think back over the past week or the past few days and think, well, what, did, what have I eaten? And then you say, well, actually, most of that, 80% roughly is usually the amount, is already plant-based. 
So that leaves only 20% that you need to adjust. And those adjustments can be uh, in an ad hoc way where, you know, it's meal by meal. Or you can suddenly say, we're not going to use dairy milk anymore. We're going to use plant plant milk. Or we're going to move away from anything that looks like a pork chop or a burger. or And we're going to replace that with something else and decide between you what that is. So it's just a very gradual, comfortable shift where people will at least give things a try and hopefully become, you know, live in agreement and harmony. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the saying that a, a journey of a thousand miles starts, sometimes starts, starts with a single, with a single step. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's just that a lot of people have this desire to make a shift. They don't know how. So it's baby steps. Just one meal at a time, either, you know, one of the day's meals or literally one meal a week. Just decide between you. That's going to be an experiment, an exploration of something people have heard about, a different way of cooking spaghetti, whatever. Um, but that it it becomes a little project all in itself. To just And then give yourself, to, when you're ready, two meals a week. That sort of thing. Does that help, Meg? It does. And I love that you have the respect for the children and, and encourage people to include them in meal planning because I have two teenagers. And when I made the switch to being vegan about five years ago, I didn't force anyone else to follow along, but I included them when we were picking out recipes that were vegan. And now they have their favorites. You know, Fantastic. now they're a part of it. Yeah. I love that, that you don't just like let them just eat whatever they want. You just make them a part of it like that. I love that. That's a really great yes. tip. I think that'll help a lot of people. Well, um, plus it's important that they become skilled. It's it, otherwise it, in a sense you're, well, I've already said it. It's a handicap not to be able to look after oneself, right? Absolutely. Among the other books that you've written, because it's been, what, 24 now, I think? Yes. I think yes. So, yeah. um, or co-written. Which one would you recommend besides The Contented Vegan for someone that's new to veganism or even someone that just wants to kind of freshen up the food that they're having? What would you recommend? Hmm. That's okay. I have to preface it by saying that this is the first overtly vegan book I've written. Oh, interesting. The reason for that is that um, when I first started writing, the publishers didn't want to mention the V word. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it would be too off-putting for people. And so I could in include vegan recipes, but I mustn't call the book vegan or mustn't uh, discuss veganism in the, in the, lit you know, the written part of the book. That's so, so interesting. It is, and, and suddenly it's changed. Well, not suddenly, but in a high-speed gradual, it's changed. And I'm very, very pleased about that. Um, so actually, my very first book, I'm, I'm sure it's out of print now, but um, I'm proud of that because it was vegetarian, but it was also for adults and children to cook together. And oh, that's a yeah. bit of a theme in my my life, mm -hmm. um, that how important it is for young people to to have this basic skill. Um, I'm sure that's not really answering your question, though, Meg. Uh, <laughs> no, it does because you you're pushing forward that idea of parents and children working together in the kitchen, which, like you said, is a running theme. But it's it's a really important aspect of you know being closer to the food that you're eating and getting kids to have healthy habits. So yes. it does answer my question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think um, it, are there any, go ahead. No, go on. Are there any vegan cookbooks that you didn't write that you use frequently that you would recommend for people? Oh, okay. There's one called The Broke Vegan. That's quite recent. Ooh. And one that I haven't looked at yet is, um, the great British vegan. Um, so I'm I'm very keen to to delve into those. But you might find that some of the older, uh, like books dealing with Indian food or Mediterranean mm. food, like um, Claudia Rodin, uh, 
are very, very vegan oriented. And then one of my favorite authors, cookery authors, who is vegetarian, but I would say very close to vegan, is Rose Elliott. Any Rose Elliott book, and she's written many, is wonderful for its uh, um, accuracy, shall I, shall I call it? Um, it's inexpensive, but also very nutritious and high quality dining. <laughs> so it's uh, Rose Elliott. That, that, that's favorite. good. That's a good thing about uh, like uh, vegetarian cooking because it's so easy to switch. Just usually it's like a butter or an egg or a dairy, which is vegan cooking. It's pretty easy to switch out. That's right. I agree. And people have known about vegetarian cookery and been more at ease with it for, for a lot longer than they have with vegan uh, cooking. So there's an abundance of those. Actually, then there's a. Have you heard of the farm in Tennessee? And that's a vegan community that's been going, I think, since the 60s. Oh, and they, they nice. were all, yeah, they were all self-sufficient and, you know, all, kind of hippies, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, they wrote this amazing cookbook, which uh, I think is uh, has come through several editions now. And that is vegan, and it's hmm. easy and interesting as well. Well, I think I think it's funny that you're you, you know about that, and we're like we're in Georgia, we're like we're you know Tennessee's right, 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 yes, right, right at the road. <laughs> so it's like, that's why I was like, what? I was like, yeah, like, that's right I'm like, there. I, I could go there right now if I want to. I, yeah. oh. I was like, how does she know this, but we don't? I'm so okay. ill informed. <laughs> well, I actually haven't kept up with what they're doing as a community. Let's check it out. Um, it's it's possible that they're no longer functioning, but it, they did exist for decades. It's very fascinating. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to diving into like, uh, more into like your, your kitchen experiences and, uh, and uh, what you, what you, what you've dealt with. What do you really enjoy most about the cooking experience? I love making something from scratch. Um, I'm, I'm not a packet person. And, uh, for me, I, I love to go in and, respond to the day just kind of get a feeling for what the day holds a little bit of my schedule and so forth and then see what's in the cupboard or in the fridge and i i often just make something without having an idea of what it's going to be necessarily um and that's how most of my recipes have have happened just by re responding to the food <laughs> And similarly with shopping, I, I love to just go out and that's beautiful. I'm going to, I'm going to buy one of those, whatever it is, a pepper or a broccoli or whatever, and then wait for the right moment and put them together. So you, you, you treat it more, you treat it more intuitively. That's the problem that I have. I tend to go in there and I'm like sitting my phone on Instagram going, oh my God, what am I going to make this week? I can't think <laughs> oh, of anything. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I don't do that. I sometimes have the, the thing, well, shall I make a hot dish or a cold dish today? Well, um, but I, I, I think, David, that the real truth is that I use it as a creative outlet. And that's, that's the biggest joy to me. Um, um, almost an artistry. We're kind of almost like pulling paint just straight out of the, out of the box and going, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to use these colors today. What can oh, we do with lovely. these colors? Yeah, yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know you, you're both artistic, aren't you? So. Yes. I try. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, put in a, I, put in, I put in a college effort. Usually it's, you know, a, a D or C average, but I put in the college effort. When oh. he stops insulting his, his uh, <laughs> abilities, then he's a great artist. But he, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. criticizes himself all the time. <laughs> That's not a good thing. I know. I, I know. Uh -huh. I'll do better. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that that way of thinking about cooking though because like I don't particularly enjoy cooking but reframing it as kind of an artistic endeavor yeah I don't know that might change the way I enjoy it so I, I like that that's a good tip for people great well you've got these it's it's kind of a four-dimensional artwork because you have so many things included in it you have the plant itself you have some spices and herbs, so you you work with shape and color and flavor and texture, all these things you already know about, and we respond to them. All of us respond to them so emphatically, um, 
And that's what you can just bring them all together and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you mentioned you had, you know, uh, in your book, you know, and even uh, we were talking earlier that uh, you like you like to really look for like local, uh, more, like local fresh ingredients if possible, which kind of leads you to more cooking within the season, correct? It does, yes. Um, the reason I like that, well, it, there's several reasons, but I, if you, if, if I eat seasonal food, then it's better quality, generally. Um, there are more nutrients in it. And having made the switch to a vegan way of eating, um, I realized that I could be a white bread and jam vegan, no problem. <laughs> and <laughs> just it get, is enough calo- <laughs> get enough calories each day, but not really get many nutrients. But of course, I decided um, to work with nutrients. And for that, you need to maximize on on fresh food, on in-season food, and preferably whole food as well. So a local grower can provide all of that. It's, it's a very neat little matchup for those factors. And that's stuck with me because then I feel um, I'm covered for my health. I don't need to take many supplements. Um, I can just choose those high quality foods just by looking at what's local, what's in season, and take it from there. Well, in, in, in your book, it's 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 vast in, in a very good way. There's so many options, things to pull from, and you know a lot of cookbooks that I've I have even on on hand, except for the one Meg got me for for, for <laughs> uh, uh They're very the kind of very narrow. Well, yours is again, it's broad. Um, yeah. So uh, of the of all the dishes, and I know it's hard to hard to pick, you know, the, the handful. What are your of the dishes you have in there? What are your top dishes for each for each for each season? Considering, well, even le- at least in you know on this this area of the world, we're we're shifting kind of we're going to be shifting out of the out of the winter season soon as soon as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm I'm very very keen on greens. There are two two recipes in there which are more like formula than recipes um, they're to do with one is called entirely green salad and the other is precious greens and they're both focusing on seasons so that um, and they offer selections of of greens that you can combine and then serve for instance over rice or pasta or if it's a salad then you just combine different herbs that are available and um, different leaves that are available and for me that's both of those represent almost the, the seasonal quality uh, of summer and spring because of the, the new greens, especially, and how much energy it seems that I get from eating greens. Um, if I've covered that base, then you know the grains or nuts and seeds, or the other foods just kind of follow behind. Um, but it's the greens that make any combination of, of, of those other foods really work and really lifts them. Does that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I just, I'm just here listening. <laughs> yeah. Getting here. I haven't had breakfast yet or lunch. So we could go look up those recipes yeah, when we're done talking. Uh, and I, this is, I, I always kind of worry about, wonder about certain, some people, especially people who enjoy cooking. Are you, are you a soup person or more of like a thicker stew person? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I, well, I love soups and I love to make soups, but I make thin soups and I make thick soups. <laughs> I, I, like, I like a good thick, heartier, heavier soup with some like yeah, crusty bread you can dip in it that stays kind yeah, of heavier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today we had pumpkin soup. Oh. And the, res- the recipe in, in the book is called pumpkin and parsnip. Okay. And that's one that is, is a winner every time. It, it's one that people love because of. I think it's because of the parsnip, to be honest, mm-hmm. which kind of brings the the spice flavor. It kind of links that to the pumpkin flavor. Pumpkin is very earthy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. And it just brings them together nicely and gives it, it also adds a few chunks that you can, if you like chunky soup. I do. Um, yes. <laughs> I, usually, I usually, usually blend some of mine up and add it back to keep kind of have that. That's thick, it. Thick, yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 Uh, as far as the thin one, my favorite in there is, is one I've called certainty soup. And it is a broth with, that has a huge variety of ingredients in with the broth. Um, 
And I, honestly, when I want that soup, I think I could finish the whole pot. <laughs> There's something about it that just um, makes me feel nourished. Uh, right, now, yeah. now, 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 I want soup. I'm, I know. Yeah. I, sh- I, sh- I should have eaten before we, before we, before we chatted. Honestly, I. Uh, I yeah. And it's <laughs> freezing here, so soup sounds oh, great. Is it? it is oh, okay. so cold. Yeah, it's. I, I, in fact, last night I'm like, I want, I need dinner, but I don't want anything cold. I want something warm. And I was like, I wish I had stuff for. So I couldn't really think, and I, I was like, that is super stew. I'd be so happy about couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about soups, my rule for soups is, um, you can't, you mustn't be able to taste the water. Right. I, I, I'm ha- bad about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if, how 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 do you how do you get around and kind of avoid the tasting the water when you're onions? So oh. put in put in at least twice as many onions as you think any soup needs, and you sauté them at the beginning until they're basically caramelized, till they're almost goopy. Yeah. And then then you add your <laughs> at some point you add your other ingredients so that they're all cooked at once, and and then you add the water. And uh, I tend to puree the water with the onion saute at some point because then you don't even have to worry about, you know, some children, for instance, don't like to feel the onion. (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) So so that's, that's how I tend to do it. So, okay, this is kind of a question for both of us, I think, really. (laughs) Okay. Um, so we've been vegan for years, both of us. Do you have any suggestions for someone who's been vegan for a long time to kind of spice things up in the kitchen? Because like I said, you know, I don't really enjoy cooking as much as I should. Um, so any kinds of suggestions to help us kind of, you know, raise our level of meals or, you know, get yeah. us more involved or more excited about it? Okay. Um, I do have a couple. <clears throat> I'm. I feel very fortunate that I'm in London because it's such an ethnically diverse city. Um, At the moment, of course, nobody's moving around, but I would suggest that you take yourself on a shopping spree. And I don't mean that you're spending a lot, but that you devote a bit of time, maybe once a season would do it for me, um, to explore places you've, uh, shops you've not gone to before specialist shops if you have them um, or if it's mail order to to purchase a, some spice you've never sp- uh, purchased before or find a local gardener who has herbs and see if you can have, have arranged to have some fresh ones now I don't know if this is if that it would inspire you um, but to take it further and to just commit to once a week or once a fortnight following a recipe from uh, a a cuisine that you've never worked with before, um, or to try a bean dish that you've never tried. Or taking your book and just flipping through some pages and finding something (laughs) to right? Take a number and just go. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) What is it? I think think we get tired, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we want, we leave it to the last minute and we want to fall back on the things we're used to and things that are easy and not too arduous. We don't have to think about it. And I understand that completely. Um, one, one way I've resolved that is by cooking in the morning. And then whatever I've made, like a soup, only gets better if you leave it all day in the fridge and then have it at night right. or, or the next day. Um, but in the morning, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm up early and I'm keen to cook. I can do do all the day's meals then, or I can do a couple days meals even. And it just feels fresh. And and then come the evening when I am a little bit too tired to do it and not feeling so creative, then I can just enjoy it, (laughs) enjoy what I've done. It's a a way to kind of wind it down. You've already done the hard work, and now you're 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 enjoying the fruits of the labor. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You kind of hit this a little bit. I was kind of, and I, I think we we talked about this briefly as earlier as well. But you're looking at uh, at your recipes, the things you have have in the book. Uh, what what staples would would you suggest we have on hand to uh, to tackle? Well, I think that the the framework for it for most people um, is a grain, 
for a collection of grains, a collection of beans, nuts and seeds, and then to do some fresh food shopping, which is the greens and vegetables and fruits. Um, that's what my staples are. I buy very good fats, I must tell you that, that uh, I, I don't just get a bottle of vegetable oil. I'm very, I'm very careful about the fats I, I feed myself and my family. Um, because I find if they're, again, if they're high quality, they are more expensive, but I don't use as much of them and they're more beneficial to the health rather than just kind of more oil, more grease. Uh, they actually have nutrient value and that's what I'm seeking. So, um, the, the oils and fats I use are, are staples. So I use tahini quite a lot, um, sesame oil, which is not the toasted sort, but just the cold pressed and has very little flavor, but it's a very good oil to cook with because it can take the heat and it doesn't go rancid. And then I use olive oil for everything else. I never cook with it, right? but uh, we, we drizzle a bit of that on a piece of toast if we have that. It, it, we don't use margarines. We just use the olive oil instead. And about twice a year, maybe a little bit more, maybe three times, I use a bit of coconut oil. If I buy a, a small jar of coconut oil, it will last me a year. Yeah, same. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a treat. It gives that very specific flavor, um, which people love, and, but it's saturated. So that's how I deal with that one. Right. That's how a lot of people don't realize when it comes to oils is like coconut oil is touted as just like the best oil there is. And it's like, it's not that healthy really yeah. among, among the oils. I, I think, I mean, every oil has a bit of saturated right. fat in it. Um, but I think there's a tendency to get enthusiastic and overdo it with coconut oil. So I just keep it in the cupboard and forget about it. And then, <laughs> you, oh, yeah, then I realize, oh, I've got some, so I'll use that. <laughs> yeah. Is Currently, it? I'm, I'm uh, another product that, um, and this is one I don't make, but it's, I, we purchase it's in nutritional yeast flakes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, Nooch. that's good. Nooch, <laughs> always, <Yes>. always good. <laughs> My teenage daughter uses it so frequently that I, I go in the cupboard and it's gone. And I, yeah. she doesn't tell me, she doesn't warn me. She's, <laughs> like got, she's got a bowl of it and a spoon, just going to town. She like, would it's not if I cereal. Let her. What are you doing? Well, well that's fantastic that you yeah. do because again, it's one of those products that sometimes people have turned their nose up at or, you know, said, well, it's too specialized. I don't want to find that. Um, but we use it in a variety of ways and it just, it is a staple for us, and plus it's so nutritious, oh, all yeah. the B vitamins in it and so forth. Any, anything that has like a uh, like a Spanish flair or an Italian flair automatically goes on top. Chilies, uh, oh, lasagnas, nice. it's like that. That's like a nice big chunk, and then <laughs> just, just <laughs> a yellow powder across the top. Fantastic. Yes, lovely, <laughs> lovely. Uh, you had uh, earlier you had talking you had uh, starting in the morning because you really really kind of making things from scratch and we have of course especially in my house I have Insta pots and bread makers and air fryers and all of our all of our fun gadgets. Do you prefer to skip those things or do you kind of see them as like tools to kind of to help you know help with the process? Well, I don't have those specific ones, but I do use whatever I've got and I okay I I predominantly pots and pans. I have a hand handheld blender. You know, without uh, one of those immersion mm -hmm. blender. Yeah, I need one so yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have I, one. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> what sure. I tend to do a lot of things by hand that are quiet because everyone else is asleep. So that's one that of the reasons. Sense. Yeah, but I do have I have milk maker, a plant milk maker. I don't know if you ever seen those yes which one do you We're, have we both want one so bad <laughs> oh, okay i've seen a couple I of them sorry darling there's quite hear. a few brands of them yes i i was given this from a family who live in thailand at the moment so i can't tell you the brand i'm afraid <laughs> but i know that there are many for sale now and i, I mean it's wonderful you can pick a seed or a bean that you think what is this really and it it works it's fascinating <laughs> yeah 
there's there's a YouTube channel called uh, so- Sauce Dash, I believe it is, and he had a whole video of making plant milks from everything, you know, like like soy milk to corn to everything. It was fantastic. Oh, okay. Oh, I have to watch that. Episode. That's a that's that a sounds diff- fascinating. Different. Yeah, you can make you can make a plant milk from everything, and they all have their own unique taste and their own uh, right. nutrition pro- profile. Yes, it is, and to make the smoothie out of them is just oh, it's heavenly. Oh yeah. Heavenly. Yeah. What's your what is your what's your, what's your favorite? Uh, I was gonna plant ask milk? that too. I gotta know <laughs> smoothie. No, yeah. for like your your nut milk or your whatever kind your of bean plant milk. based milk. Like, what's your favorite? Actually, it's mung bean. Really. Oh. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. The... yeah, I know. I was surprised too. <laughs> <laughs> I just found it so delicious, and it's it's not necessarily pretty. You got to look at it in a certain way or put it in a certain color cup to make it look pretty. But <laughs> it was delicious. I'm the same way. Okay. <laughs> you gotta get like me from a certain angle, put, put, put yeah. a pretty nice cup, and then a little more pretty. But other than that, yeah. that's not I'm, not I'm not nothing to look at, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> such a dork. I have a moment. I, uh... I'm, I'm making tempeh at the moment. Oh it's, yes. You like the tempeh? Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, well, yes. I was given a gift of um some crushed soybeans and a starter, tempeh starter. Please. And that's, oh, it's fascinating. And now I'm on to the whole soybeans. <laughs> um, and it's really a wonderful uh, project. It takes a couple of days for it to work. But, you know, you just do a few things here and there during the course of the days. And then the flavor is out of this world. I, you know, previously bought frozen tempeh mm-hmm. and never had it fresh. Um, and it's just gorgeous. So I, I do have a about three recipes in the, in the book that are tempeh based and my favorite of those at the moment is the what I've called a TLT you know the tempeh lettuce and tomato mm-hmm. <laughs> sandwich that is pretty um, popular here at the our Whole Foods um, grocery stores they have okay. their own kind of version of that and they put yeah. avocado on it it's very oh popular my gosh. Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> no. oh, avocado makes it everything wonderful doesn't oh, it? Yeah. It's, it really does a little bit of protein nice good thin layer of fat mm, it's a healthy fat it's good fat. It's tasty. <laughs> exactly uh, when you yes. speaking of tempeh and it's first off I gotta ask when you make your own tempeh is the how's what's the flavor profile different from buying it pre-made? Is it roughly the same, or is it? Um, I, I don't know how to describe it. It has this, the taste of freshness, first of all. Yeah. Um, and also it has a, uh, I don't want to call it nutty, but it's a slightly more earthy flavor than the frozen version. Hmm. I've I've been I've been wanting to uh, to make my own so. Uh, it's just, uh, I recommend it. It's it's really. I mean, the first time is kind of. Oh my God, am I doing this right? <laughs> but it's actually very easy, and it's it's like bread making in that you do a few minutes work, and then you walk off and do something else, and then you return later and do the next stage. So it it's spread out over time, but not very much time um, that you have to dedicate yourself to it. I might try it. I'm no nervous. Well, David just got into bread making over the summer, ah, so fantastic. Yes. Yeah. To be fair, I have a bread maker. I'm not like kneading the dough myself and going to town. It's like, but you know, I'm, it's something. You're slowly to try. learning. I'm there you there. go. Yeah. Nice. The, nice. The pizza dough oh. is what got me because pizza dough. I keep having it too thick when I I make it and then I'll roll it out and everything and then it's too thick and then it turns into pizza cake when it comes out of the oven. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still getting the, the how thin to make the dough when I cook it because it's not quite. Yeah. <laughs> With your with your oh, with your tempeh, and this is and this is almost for this is this is for me. This is a for me question because it's driving. It's just I'm trying to I'm trying to almost ten years vegan. I'm still trying to forget my tempeh. Right? How do you prepare your tempeh so it, it really kind of takes on those flavors without having to marinate it for like four or five days? Well, um, I do marinate it sometimes, but usually I can get by with four hours, um, and I make a quite quite a strong marinade with lemon juice and or vinegar. Um, lots of garlic in, in my case and chili flakes and then I use tamari or liquid aminos that's it lemon juice vinegar. yep that's it <laughs> and sometimes I chop you know like a spring onion a oh, little, yeah. um, or chives and add that to it as well and I just mm. saute the the tempeh slices and and then immerse them in the the marinade and 
again, I can do that in the morning and have it for lunch or late lunch. And it's, it's, it's absorbed those flavors. Oh, I would add a bit of grated ginger to the marinade. Oh, I love ginger. If you want oh, a strong a flavor. Idea. Yeah. So I just, I would put the whole, whole, just I'll grate the whole thing. Just all of the yeah. ginger. It's just, yeah. mm, <laughs> love the spice of it. Mm, the, the kick of it. Uh, yeah. I got, I, and uh, I think we're kind of running, running a little low. So, and I again, I know it's late for you, so we don't go too deep into your, to, to, to the, to the end of your day. Um, but I have, I have, I have one more question. Uh, it's, uh, if you had to, if, if there's one recipe that's in your book, in the, in your book, that's your baby, that's your favorite. That's the, that's the one you got to have, which, which one would it be? Oh, we're making oh. a list here, by the way. Oh, that's not fair. I got to ask, I got to, cause there's so much in there. It's to choose. Like if I wanted to get the one that like Peggy would go this one, try this one. Like, what would it You're be? making her oh. pick her favorite child. Yes. That's not nice. That's right. I got it. I got it. You know, sometimes life has hard choices. You got to kind of, yeah, it is hard. It's very hard. Um, oh, golly. <laughs> On the spot. It can't. Can I give you another soup? Absolutely. Sure, I love absolutely. soup. Oh, yeah. I love some soup. Okay. It's it's an all-time favorite. Leek and potato soup is oh, what it's called. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Already so love it. Super good. <laughs> like right now. I'll tell you what. Can you fly to Georgia for me? Just make me <laughs> yeah. a good soup. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, okay. it's, it's, the, it's the soup season, isn't it? We it have really to say. Is. I mean, perhaps coming to an end, but um, it's definitely still cold everywhere, so... Soups do tend to hit the spot. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm. Ha- I think I'm have soup for lunch. Yeah. I've decided. Yeah, there's a place near me. I can get some good soup. That's what I'm doing. There you go. All right, I, I gotta go. <laughs> button. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> David just leaves. <laughs> soup time. <laughs> Car peels out. Uh, <laughs> oh goodness. <clears throat> Oh, we really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us again. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. It does fly past. It does. It really yes. does. Yeah. yeah. We're like, oh my God, we're all the time so fast. It's, <laughs> it's been lovely though. We've learned a lot, like super inspired to kind of think about cooking in a different way. So that's a big deal to me because again, it's not my favorite thing. So yeah. I appreciate the inspiration. Yeah, I, I think. If, if I think we see it as a chore often, and the the switch can be to to see it as a celebration. That's a good. Yeah. yeah. It, to me, it yeah, is. It. It's like it's my daily. Like I, I on Sundays after I've done all of my cleaning of the house and all the dog stuff, I'm like meal plan, go to the store, buy the stuff, make it. You know. So yeah, it's definitely a. It's definitely become a more of a chore for me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let. Like- up by letting you tell everyone how they can contact you how they can find out more about the contented vegan and when it's coming out and all that stuff okay thank you um so my book is called the contented vegan my name is peggy brusso and my website is peggybrusso.com um the book is coming out in america early march it's already out here in the uk and in australia um and I, I do have an Instagram page. It's again, Peggy Brousseau. I guess it's IG, isn't it? Um, which I try, I, I enjoy that. I take photographs of the food as I make it and post it up there. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll have links to everything uh, and uh, links to your Instagram and think everything up on our, our show notes. So oh, can, thank can you, thank you. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've really enjoyed this. I, and. I agree with you, Meg. I could talk for hours. Yeah, and the, the book is so big. It's like uh, we have we had a ton, we have tons of questions. We're like, oh, this isn't about three hours if we don't like. Okay. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't jump quick. I know your your time is precious, and uh, we don't want to take too much from yours. So, uh, Peggy, thank you for thank you for taking the time. We really appreciate it. We thank really you, David. Feel. I've enjoyed it. Wonderful. Absolutely. Thanks, Meg. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 And that was our interview with Peggy Brousseau. Uh, she's a food writer and cookbook author. Of course, we'll have uh, links to her social media in the show notes. And Peggy's upcoming vegan cookbook, The Contented Vegan Recipes and Philosophy Philosophy from a Family Kitchen, will be released on March 1st of this year. So it's coming up. Lucky for you, we have a copy already. And we have a contest starting today where you can win this copy. You have four ways to win. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. They're both um, the average vegans. Easy, you can find us. 
Um, you could also share our post about Peggy's interview on Facebook or Instagram, either one. And you can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. So you have four ways to enter. If you do all four, you earn four entries into this contest. Super simple. You can do it. You have until Wednesday, February 17th to enter, and we will let everyone know who won and send out the beautiful cookbook by Peggy to you. Um, you're going to love it. It's beautiful. I kind of don't want to give it away, but you know. It's so, it has so much information in it. Of course, it's, as you heard in our conversation, it's just a plethora of information in it. It is, and it's beautiful inside too. It's not just full of information. It's also very beautifully illustrated with pictures of amazing meals that you will get to try out. So enter to win, um, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, or anywhere else you get your podcast fix. Make sure to leave us a review and recommend us to your friends, your family, coworkers, strangers, the delivery driver. Of course, follow us on Instagram at The Average Vegans and on Facebook. Email us at theaveragevegans at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Show notes and links and more will be found at theaveragevegans.com. We want to know what kind of episodes you would like to see coming up. If you have anything to recommend, let us know. Message us, all that good stuff. And we hope today's interview helped you guys. That's about it. All right. Well, until next time. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>